I'm hooking up phones. Let's get started. I spent a good portion of today trying to figure out how to uh, put together this particular video. Um, you know, I'm making some really good progress uh, with the project, so I've got um, these devices hooked up to my PBX server. Um, but I thought that uh, I wanted to do two things in this video. The first one is to sort of, in really general terms, talk about how uh, my network is set up and how my PBX server fits in that. Uh, and then I want to talk to uh, talk to you guys about how or some of the problems that I ran into trying to hook these guys up. Um, I will leave in the description below links to uh, some websites that actually have some really good information on how to configure these guys because that you know those sites will absolutely explain it better than I could in the video. So my PBX server sits behind my firewall in my network rack and um, in the PBX server uh, I've got three different extensions created and each one of those extensions ties to a different device. Uh, this is the first one, this is the Linksys PAP2TNA. Uh, this is going to let me connect up my existing wireless telephones and this guy here on the left is the Nortel IP phone model 1535. The third uh, extension or the third device that I'm hooking up to my PBX server is actually a piece of software that I have loaded on my computer and it's a it's actually phone software that hooks up to the PBX and it just lets me do some testing so really basically the way it works is you define an extension in your PBX server and then each one of those extensions ties to these guys and then you configure each one of these guys appropriately so that they can talk to the PBX server uh, I'll leave links in the description below so you can see how that's done. Uh, the Linksys device was kind of interesting to hook up. It, it actually has its uh, a little web config page that you can actually navigate through a regular uh, internet browser. And then in that browser, um, browser window, you actually go ahead and input all of the appropriate extension information. Uh, so you plug in the, uh, the right numbers, the right values, and the appropriate passwords port numbers and all that stuff, um, apply and then um, plug in your phone and then you're all set. This actually was really easy to set up. I did have one interesting problem that I haven't yet figured out with this guy. So uh, when you pick up your phone, whether it's your cell phone or your house phone or any other normal phone, you dial the number, you hit send or talk or whatever it is, and then on the phone itself you'll actually hear the phone ringing on the other end. But when you hear that ringing, you know that the call has been is being made and it actually is successful. At least that um, you know you have a good connection. Um, I'm not hearing that phone uh, ring back. I think is what they call it with this guy just yet. So I, you know, it makes calls beautifully. It, you know, it, it answers phone calls and 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 all of that stuff works okay. Except that when I call and dial a number, I don't hear the phone ringing on the handset and that's actually a little um, uh, it's actually weird to hear that because your first re or not hear it I should say because your first reaction is to say that I don't have I'm not connected I don't have a good connection um, so that sort of audio cue is uh, important and I'm sure that there's a way to fix that I just have to find it and and make sure that works and I'm gonna have to figure that out before I, I make the switch because that's just something that you, you you just have to have, I think. The Nortel phone actually took a couple hours to set up, uh, and uh, the problem that I was running into was that it was not connecting uh, or not seeing my PBX server. Uh, I was doing some basic troubleshooting, uh, so the, the phone itself actually has a really basic uh, web browser, and I was able to get uh, online to actually Google's web page uh, through the phone, and uh, so I knew that I had a good network connection so I knew that my line was good so I, that wasn't an issue uh, but I could not get it to talk to my my server so you input all of that um, extension information all that configuration stuff uh, via the settings uh, menu and I had all my information there was not working so I did a factory reset because I started playing around and monkeying around with all of the different values just to see if anything was going to make a difference so I wiped it, started fresh, 
with a factory reset. And uh, there were two things that I needed to do uh, to make this work. The first thing was I found uh, a post on the PBX and the Flash forums where um, there's this one setting. So this is our VoIP settings on the phone. Uh, I think it's on the proxy. Yeah, so there's this setting. This uh, says NAT timer. And I'm not entirely sure what that is. Um, but whatever. Um, this actually had uh, a value. I think it was 20 seconds by default. I disabled it um, based on uh, one of these posts that I read. And then the other thing, which actually was a little bit more sneaky, um, is again in these uh, VoIP settings, I think it's proxy and port. So 5060, I don't know, I think you can see that, um, is your default port number as defined by my PBX server for the extension. I had read uh, in uh, a couple of different places that you normally don't want to use uh, default port numbers anywhere, so I changed that to some other number, and I made sure to put that number properly in the phone and in my extension so they matched, but it wasn't connecting. And as soon as I went back and used port 5060, which was that default guy, uh, and in combination with turning off this NAT timer, all of a sudden it worked like a charm. So now I get good dial tone and it works beautifully. A few more things left to do so that I can actually wrap up this project because we're actually getting to the end here. I have to fix that ringback problem with the Linksys that I talked about before. Uh, I'm going to have to run a uh, network line from my basement up to my kitchen so I can actually... Um, get this connected in its final spot uh, and then once I have that done I can actually go ahead and transfer my number from Time Warner over to Google Voice uh, and then I'll be done. Uh, I'll be saving probably about 45 bucks a month uh, once I do that uh, give or take with taxes and, and then that'll be awesome because that's money that I'm not giving away I'll actually uh, pocket that which will be awesome. So definitely like and subscribe because uh, that helps me out a ton. Check out the description below for all of the links that I talked about in the video as well as links to uh, my Twitter page and Google+. Plus. So follow me there. You'll get updates on when new videos are posted. And uh, definitely uh, thanks for watching, you guys. See you next time.